Hello boys and girls, Miss Doe here, if you're watching this, then I'm already dead, oops, wrong line, if you're watching this, then someone is already dead, and we're here to remember his or her name, actually we're here to remember their stories, today's case is about a woman named Oak Girl Jane Doe. The case happened in 1946, and it's still unsolved. Come on, let's begin. On the morning of April the 12th, 1946, three people on a walk noticed an odd burlap sack floating near the bank of the Willamette River near Oak Grove in Portland, Oregon. After they cut through the tape, rope, and telephone wire that was holding the package together, they were shocked to find a human torso. In it were also some women's clothing and sash waves. The next day, fishermen pulled a similar package from the river, about six miles from where the torso had been found. The men had noticed the sack about a month before, but did not think it was anything important until they heard about the discovery of the torso. This package was also tied with a telephone wire and weighed down with sash weights. It contained their right thigh and handless arms. In July, a left thigh was found in a bundle of clothes in the adjacent Clackamas County River, near John McLaughlin Bridge. A few months later, in October, a couple taking a stroll found another package near the bank of the Willamette River near where the torso had been found. Wrapped in pieces of newspaper, a shirt and some clothes, the sack contained a human head. It had also been weighed down with sash weights. Clackamas County Coroner Ray Rylance estimated that the remains belonged to a young woman. However, this information was soon corrected by Dr. Warren Hunter, a pathologist from the University of Oregon Medical School. Dr. Hunter concluded that the remains belonged to a middle-aged, past 50, Caucasian woman. She is estimated to have weighed 140 to 150 pounds and was between 5 feet 2 inches and 5 feet 4 inches. She likely had grain-brown hair, which at the time of her death was put up in curls held by bobby pins. The woman also wore dentures. Even though the woman's head was found, it could not be used to identify her as it was too decayed. Her cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head. The woman's body had been cut neatly. It has been suggested that she was tortured prior to her death. There were burn marks on the lower part of her torso that may have been caused by a blowtorch. Authorities received numerous letters from people who had missing loved ones. Police tried to identify the woman through missing person reports, but there were no matches. The Willamette River was searched to no avail. Police believed they found a secluded spot where the perpetrator threw the package containing the woman's arms and right thigh from. The footprints were just 10 feet from where the sack was found. They believe it was a man with a shoe size of 10 or larger who was familiar with the area. A sack of rabbit feed from the brand Scopel was found beside the tracks. The gunny sack is similar to the ones that were found with the torso. A man in Milwaukee was arrested after calling authorities from a phone booth. Among other things, he claimed to know where the woman had been dismembered. Police concluded that the man did not know anything about the crime and was simply looking for attention. Despite all efforts, the woman has never been identified. The crime is known as the Wisdom Light murder due to the torso having been found near Wisdom Light Moorage. In 2016, others, J.D. Chandler and Theresa Griffin Kennedy released a book in which they mentioned the Wisdom Light murder. Murder and Scandal in Prohibition Portland. They believe there is convincing evidence that the remains belong to Anna Schrader. She vanished just a couple of weeks before the mysterious body parts began to appear in the river. 
Anna was married to a railroad worker, Edward Schrader, but was having a long-term affair with Portland Police Lieutenant William Bill Bruning. He had trained her to become his informant. Because of this, Anna had inside information about the Portland Police. It was the Prohibition era and the department had been involved in a lot of corruption. Anna had a little black book with incriminating evidence. Anna wanted Bill to leave his wife and children, but he refused. Their relationship ended in 1929 after the couple got into a heated argument. Anna was holding a gun that went off as the couple fought. At one point, Bill broke a couple of her ribs trying to restrain her. The affair became a citywide scandal. While Bill denied the affair, Edward took his wife's side and sued Bill for alienation of affections. Anna pressed false arrest and assault charges and won, resulting in Bill being fired. Anna spent the next few years being harassed and suffered several car accidents and home burglaries. She may have taken these incidents as a warning to not release the accusatory evidence she had. By 1946, Anna was a 63-year-old widow. That year, Leon Jenkins resumed his position as Portland's chief of police. He had been chief during the scandal and had sided with the department which Anna resented. It has been theorized that this renewed Anna's desire to expose the department's corruption. She told friends she wanted to go to Minnesota. It is possible that she planned to leave the state and mail her notebook to the Oregonian. Notably, a week before the torso was found in the river, someone ran an ad in the Oregonian searching for an Ann Schrader. The ad ran again on the day the torso was found. There have been no traces of Anna since 1946. She fits the description of the remains. Notably, she wore her hair in ringlets. The hat had hair and curls. Cold case detective John Krimenecker is skeptical about this theory but says he can't rule it out. During the initial investigation, authorities never considered the possibility of the remains belonging to Anna. There are a few other missing women who have been linked to the Oak Grove Jane Doe that can't be entirely ruled out. The sister of Bessie Carol Nevins reached out to the Portland police after hearing about the unidentified remains. Bessie had left Los Angeles on July the 10th, 1943. She spoke to a man on the phone who said he was taking Bessie to work on a ranch in Oregon. He claimed to be their cousin, but the sister does not know who he is. Bessie was in her early 50s and had gray hair. In October of 1944, Eva Linder Panko divorced from her abusive husband Tony Panko. She moved to Southeast Portland with her shipyard co-worker Herbert Troy Dennis. Their house burned down and Eva was never heard from again. Herbert was later found. He had a history of forgery and the house fire was determined to have been for insurance purposes. He would later also vanish. Notably, it is believed that the unidentified woman had both eyes when she was killed, even though her head was found eyeless. Eva had a glass eye and was consequently ruled out as much at the time. Nevertheless, she does fit the remains description. She was in her 50s, wore false teeth, had graying brown hair, was 5 feet 3 inches and weighed 140 pounds. Marion Coffey had a complicated marriage to Alton Coffey. He denied being abusive but had tried to kill his wife several times. On April the 16th, 1946, Alton went to the Telecom Tavern in Oregon where Marion spent a lot of her time. He showed the owner a newspaper article about the discovery of the torso and said he thought it was Marion. He spoke to authorities and told them he had last seen her on March the 18th. Furthermore, he viewed the unidentified woman's clothes and believed they belonged to his wife. Marion was 50 years old, was 5 feet 4 inches and weighed 140 pounds. She had dark brown hair, wore glasses and had false teeth. Now, 
you won't be happy about the things I will say, but you know, it's not my fault. Well, sadly, it is unlikely that the remains will ever be identified. Despite the recent major developments in the field of forensic DNA, cannot be applied to this case. Because the woman's remains went missing decades ago. I know, I know. I know, this is so sad. She doesn't have a name. She doesn't even have a grave. And I don't know what to say, but I find it so sad. Oak Grove Jane Doe has been unidentified for 74 years. Thank you for watching. Thank you for remembering this woman with me. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. If I told something wrong about the case, you may correct me by writing a comment. Sometimes comments get turned off because of the graphic content and I'm sorry about that. Have a life vlog starts. Till then.